Sekiro is a merciless game. It demands a level of mastery that's even a step above the usual Souls get good level, and to be honest, we were not prepared for that. A cursory glance at Reddit shows a community of people who feel frustrated, let down, and even betrayed by From Software. And that sucks because Sekiro is an incredible game. So why all the frustration? The Souls community should be used to this, right? Strangely, it seems that a bank of experience with the Soulsborne games may actually work against you here. But don't give up. If you've hit similar difficulty walls in your journey through Ashina, hopefully we can share some tips that might make your travels a little bit more enjoyable. One of the first steps should be unlearning all the Soulsborne strategies you've subconsciously picked up over the years. Soulsborne games may have cosmetic differences, but they play in essentially the same way. Block, dodge, run in, strike, and repeat. In Sekiro, this method will get you killed, and quickly. And yes, we didn't mention Bloodborne staggering, because we gotta spice up the comment section somehow. But undoing all that hard-earned experience doesn't happen right away, so let's break it up into a couple more manageable steps. If you're just starting out, stick to stealth as much as you can. Even one enemy can be deadly, but five or six enemies will kill you nearly instantly since they attack you simultaneously. If they spot you, there's no shame in running away to break their aggro. Dead shinobi tell no tales, but living ones make it to the next sculptor idol. Once the aggro Dorito chip over their head disappears, sneak up behind them for a death blow. This also works on most of the game's mini-bosses, allowing you an otherwise unavailable sneak attack. If you feel like there's no opportunity for a stealth attack, you may just need to broaden your perception. There are a ton of hidden paths and grapple points just off camera that will allow you to get the jump on enemies. It's easy to bash your head against the same perceived challenge after you feel like your gamer pride has been insulted, but winning is winning in Sekiro. Circumventing an enemy and stabbing them in the back is the same as beating them face to face as far as the game's concerned, so don't make combat harder than it needs to be. Often, an incredibly difficult encounter can be solved by backtracking a bit or using a distraction item to reduce the total number of enemies. However, you won't be able to make it through the entire game with just stealth. At some point, you will have to go sword to sword, which brings us to our next tip. One of the toughest mental hurdles to get over is that dodging works very differently than in the Souls games. Instinctually, you'll want to jump or dodge away from an enemy, but most of their moves can track you, even in the air, and they'll still connect. Instead, stay close and deflect their attacks. It'll seem like you're not doing anything, but every deflected attack does posture damage, which is functionally identical to landing attacks. And then, when the enemy's flurry of attacks is done, lay in with one or two attacks yourself. Even if the enemy guards your attacks, you're still building up more posture damage, which, again, gets you closer to killing the enemy. This is extremely important when it comes to most of the game bosses, but more on that in a minute. Naturally, the enemy's gonna try to break your posture, too. Make sure to keep an eye on your own posture as well, and the main stat that affects it, your health. The higher your health, the faster your posture meter recovers, with the inverse obviously being true as well. Typically in Soulsborne games, you're just trying not to die. Being at half health is just as good as being at full health, as long as you won't get one shot to death. But in Sekiro, you'll want to keep your health topped up at all times, if possible. This is what allows you to parry your block long attack strings without having your posture broken. Thankfully, enemies can't perform a death blow on you if your posture breaks, but in a big fight, getting staggered could be the difference between life and death. If your posture's about to be broken, it's time to create some distance and recover. Dodging and jumping are excellent tools to create some distance. Just make sure to invest in the Shinobi Art Mid-Air Deflection so you can bail out of a close encounter without getting tagged in the air on your way out. Above all else, don't ignore the moves in your skill tree. It's pretty easy to forget about them or just give up on trying to learn them entirely, but it's important to realize that a lot of fundamental upgrades are hidden in the skill trees, and you may not even know it until you buy some of the earlier skills. This includes skills that reduce posture damage taken, enhance posture damage given, and increase the amount healed from your healing gourd. Just because you don't think you'll use the next skill in the tree doesn't mean a hugely helpful upgrade is hidden just behind it. If you notice that you keep dying to a certain move like a thrust or a sweeping attack, go practice with Hanbei, the immortal warrior who offers to train with you. FromSoft gave you a sparring partner for a reason, so make sure to use them. It's a no-risk method to get your timing down and learn how each of your skills works. And make sure to train with intent. 
Doing a move incorrectly can be just as important as doing it correctly so that you can learn where the timing boundaries are. You might be tempted to walk away after nailing a move a few times, but playing with the timing will help you better understand why attacks work and why they don't. Because the skills aren't combos that require rapidly tapping a series of buttons, they're actually pretty easy to pull off with practice, and there's a good counter for just about every move an enemy throws at you. Jumping on an enemy's head during a sweeping attack deals a huge amount of posture damage and is especially effective against samurai mini-bosses. On the subject of counters, get the Mikiri counter as soon as possible. It's an insta-kill for weaker spear enemies and almost trivializes some mini-bosses. Exploration's always been an important part of From Software's games. Demon's Souls and the original Dark Souls blossomed after their tutorial areas and let you decide where you wanted to go from the beginning of the game. The games nudged you towards a suggested path, but nothing stopped you from running straight into an endgame area from the jump. In Dark Souls, you can just go fight the Four Kings, a late game boss, within 10 minutes of starting a new file. Sekiro isn't quite so open, but there are areas you can reach well before the story takes you there. This is helpful for a number of reasons. First, it gives you access to helpful NPCs and items hours before you would have found them in a more linear playthrough. Some of those items are immensely useful, such as the gourd seeds that increase the number of heals your gourd can offer. Thanks to the grappling hook, there's an incredible verticality to the world that we haven't seen in a Souls game. So when exploring, make sure to always look up, down, or across cliffs for the telltale signs of a grapple point. Like the Soulsborne games, there are also options for farming. Enemies scale in difficulty by area, and the harder the enemy, the better the drops. Luckily, even the strongest enemies are vulnerable to one-shot sneak attacks. A good strategy if you need to grind experience or sand is to sprint through an area with enemies far beyond what you're able to take on right now. Rest at the nearest idol and look for an enemy with its back toward you. Kill it with a sneak attack, run back to the idol, and repeat. Yeah, farming may be annoying, but never forget that it's a viable strategy if you need to bulk up a bit before a tough boss fight. Speaking of bosses, let's look at some numbers. Steam shows that only 45.4% of players have beaten Lady Butterfly. That's one of the earliest bosses in the game, and less than half of the people playing on PC have gotten past her. Then there's a drop of almost 10% for each boss after that. Clearly, bosses are causing players to drop the game entirely, so let's look at some strategies for taking on the game's bosses. Before you even try to take down a boss, you should enter the arena once, keep your distance, block everything, and just count the number of hits in a combo. Try to memorize the tells before certain moves, how best to counter, and on which animations you can sneak in some damage. Sekiro's boss fights are almost like a dance, with the player rapidly trading off between defense and offense, exploiting a few frames worth of weakness, and then maybe throwing in a quick prosthetic maneuver if possible. Your sword can block almost anything, no matter how big. If you don't see that red kanji symbol, you can block it. So while it may be intimidating to see a giant monkey with a sword in its neck screaming down on you, don't panic. Just throw up your sword and let him tire himself out. Lastly, keep in mind that you're not alone. There's a huge community of people out there all trying to get through the game too, sharing tips and secrets and commiserating with each other about how freaking hard that Genichiro fight is. If you're trying to find a way to blast through the game on easy mode, you're not gonna find it. Sekiro just isn't that kind of game. There's a reason people talk about these FromSoft games with a mixture of equal parts elation and pure dread. Part of the fun is sharing in that journey and exchanging tips with everyone else torturing themselves in the same way. But if you follow these tips and really take the time to understand the systems in place, you'll give yourself a fighting chance. Just keep heart. Everyone here at Inside Gaming is rooting for you. Just come back once you beat the game and let us know so we can give you the congrats you deserve. Hey everyone, welcome to the review for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I'm Lawrence, I played as much of the game as I possibly could, and I'm a little short on sleep because of it, but I did it for you, the gamers. I'm joined by uh, Bruce and Adam. How would you describe your relationship with From Software and the Souls series? I, I mean, in the office, Bruce and I are basically known as the Souls veterans. We're the experts. 